Hello there, my name is Christina and I am a homesteading, homeschooling mom of three. Thank you for joining me today. I am going to be talking, talking to you about how our family saves money. Alright, so I'm a nerdy kind of lady who likes to save money. I don't know if that's you, but if it is, come along, join me. I hope you subscribe because I do. I love getting down into the nitty and gritty and get, you know learning about all the dollars and cents and where my money is going and how I can just make my money stretch just a little bit more. And it seems like today more than ever it's important, but it's just something that I've always enjoyed doing. So today I want to be talking to you about bread. I had said in a previous video that I did not think, think that making bread was saving us that much money and here's why in the past i have bought walmart bread at 88 cents a loaf it's like their cheapest white sandwich loaf and then i could also buy on sale like regularly i could always find on clearance their french bread or italian bread whatever it's the big long loaf that you might like slice up and eat with spaghetti or something like that um but i could almost always find that um for 50 cents in the like bakers bakeries clearance section so um, if I were to make my own loaf of bread, it would cost me about 60, 70 cents, okay? Um, here, I'm going to share with you our current prices on materials. <clears throat> Let me pull it up here so that I can, I can um, break down for you what it's really costing us now to buy bread at the grocery store and how much it costs to make just a couple different kinds of bread. But I'm going to go ahead and share with you these prices. So as of March 26, 2020, a loaf of bread at Walmart, which up until now had been 88 cents, they finally said, okay, everybody's admitted, inflation's real, prices are going up, we can go ahead and raise our prices now. So it's gone from 88 cents to 93 cents a loaf now. Um, 10 pounds of all-purpose flour is $3.96. November 2021, it was $2.97. And in 2020, it was actually only $2.24. So that has gone up. 10 pounds of sugar is currently $4.98, and it was $4.80 in December. One gallon of vegetable oil is $7.82. That's gone up significantly from, I don't have the price right in front of me, but I know it was for something. It's in an older video. I'll see if I can post it here for you. Um, yeast. Okay, so a thing of yeast like this one. All right, this one says bread machine, but they're all pretty much the same price. A thing of yeast, yeast like this that is four ounces is $5.00 white vinegar which is in some recipes for bread not all but i'm going to go ahead and include it here two dollars and 67 cents salt is 40 cents and great value large white eggs was uh two dollars and 34 cents for 18. um let's see now if you go on to amazon and you buy like one pound of yeast one of these packs it costs one pound of yeast like this is seven dollars and 17 cents but the deal of all deals when it comes to yeast, the deal of all deals, this right here, this two pack, two pounds of yeast, I just bought at Sam's Club for $4.98. That right there, sisters and brothers, is gonna bring down the price of bread for sure. So let's go into why. So the flour is about 11 cents per cup, sugar, 22 cents per cup, vegetable oil, 49 cents per cup, yeast 21 cents per teaspoon and that is for this because this is what I had been buying primarily in the past uh, my Walmart which is where I typically shop does not carry the one pound containers and I just hadn't thought to order it on Amazon so I have been buying this for five dollars now if we were to compare that this right here would be five dollars in this is four ounces one pound is 16 ounces I would need four of these to make one pound. That would be five, 10, 15, $20, $20 for one pound of yeast if I just bought it in these containers. Okay, if you were getting from Amazon, one pound of yeast right here, just this one, that is $7.17. Okay, check this out. I just bought this two pounds at Walmart, which is the same as eight of these. Okay, so this, I'm, I got this, not at Walmart, I'm sorry. I got um, two pounds of yeast at um, Sam's Club for $5. And I got this, which is four ounces. It would take eight of these to make this. I bought this for five, this for five. Big, big savings there. Now, previously, my bread 
Oh, I forgot to tell you the vinegar is 17 cents per cup. Salt is three hundredths per teaspoon and eggs uh, about 13 cents in eggs. 13 cents per egg. Now we do raise our own eggs here. We raise our own chickens. So um, to be honest with you, I don't keep very good track of what we're paying in feed. Sometimes it might just be better not to know, to be honest with you. There is a recipe that I will link down below. It is from dealstomeals.com and it is for easy homemade French bread. And that recipe makes four loaves. And to make that using the ingredients, including this yeast, would be um, $1.20 per loaf. If I made it using the price for one pound of yeast from Amazon, it would be 77, 78 cents a loaf. Now that is savings. All right, so now that this amazing deal from Sam's Club is before me, I need to do some recalculations. So, one moment please. All right guys, so to break it down, 21 cents per teaspoon. Seven cents per teaspoon, three cents per teaspoon. Meals to meals are four loaves of easy homemade French bread. It is, <clears throat> it would be one dollar and twenty cents, one dollar nineteen cents, one dollar twenty cents with this per loaf. Um, it is seventy eight cents per loaf using this one pound thing of yeast, and it is sixty six cents per loaf using the deal that you would get from Sam's with the two pounds. There's another recipe I'm going to link down below from Chicken Scratch Diaries, and it had advertised um, bread at 64 cents a loaf. Now that was years ago. Um, if you're using this yeast, it is $1.06 per loaf. This yeast is 68 cents per loaf, and this yeast, yeast is 57 cents per loaf. Now another factor to consider um, when doing the cost of making bread is going to be your time. Do you have time to make bread? Because I mean, you know, just saving a few cents isn't that big of a deal. Um, if you're a really busy person, you need the convenience, right? Don't, you can't stress yourself out too much over doing things from scratch. But if you have time and it's something you enjoy, or if it's a job that you can give one of your kids to do as a chore, maybe they're getting, an old, they're, old, they're getting old enough that they can do this and it's a way they can contribute to the family. That would be a nice thing for them to do. Um, so something to consider would be your time. Another is the amount of energy as in your electricity that it takes for the oven to be running. Um, I like the idea of doing four loaves at once. Um, you, you could probably keep two out and stick two in the fridge or freezer for um, a few days or however long. Um, another thing to consider is going to be gas. So for example, the bread that I had been buying at Walmart is 88 cents, but that's about an hour trip away. So I'm not gonna make a special trip like I can't just like swing by Walmart and get bread like some people can. If I were going to swing by a store, um, it would probably be the Dollar General and the least expensive loaf of bread I found the last time I went in was $1.60. Comparing the Walmart brand bread to the Deals to Meals bread where I can make four loaves at once, I would be saving 27 cents. To compare it to the Dollar General brand, which was, as I said, $1.60, which was my least expensive option in my town where I can just swing by, I would be saving 94 cents. That's almost like, if you were to compare that to Walmart, that'd be like buy one, get one free, right? That's, a, that's pretty nice. Using the Chicken Scratch Diaries recipe and my two pounds of yeast deal, I would save 36 cents if I were comparing that to buying Walmart bread. And if I was comparing buying it to the Dollar General bread, I would save $1.03. And that is starting to feel like a significant savings when it's buy one, get one free. Especially if you're going through um, several loaves a week, if you have a large family and you plan on having a lot of sandwiches or something like that. So, hmm, I think I'm gonna have to redact my statement. It could totally save us money to make our own bread. I just wasn't looking for the right deals. Literally half the cost of the bread was tied up in yeast when I was comparing to buying it with this yeast here, the four ounces at a time. So I thought, well, how can I bring that cost down or is there something that I can substitute the yeast with? And so these are some ideas I had. If maybe you aren't interested in ordering from Amazon, you don't wanna support that industry, or perhaps you um, don't have a Sam's Club membership and you don't really wanna bother anybody about going to Sam's Club, here are some things I thought of. There are a couple different kinds of breads that don't require the yeast 
the use of yeast like this that you're thinking of. The first you've probably heard of and that is sourdough bread. But sourdough has a particular flavor to it that some people don't enjoy. I do like it, but I am not a master of making sourdough bread. I think I've only done it once or twice and it's not something that like I feel confident in, you know, giving you directions on how to do. It's not something I've done very well, very much anyway. So there is sourdough bread and another option is salt rising bread and I am totally inexperienced in that. However, I have tried sourdough bread, or not sourdough, excuse me, I have tried salt rising bread on a couple occasions and I think it's pretty good. It's a very dense bread. Um, not everybody agrees and not everybody likes it. So it's kind of like a love it or hate it type of thing. So you can go ahead and um, try leavening your bread in other ways. Salt rising bread, sourdough bread if you want to try to avoid yeast. Those are both potentially ways to save money on your bread, cut that cost even further. Another option would be um, to actually avoid unleavened breads altogether. Perhaps your family... Correction, I meant to say avoid leavened bread. Use unleavened bread. Family ...would be satisfied with making pitas or making um, wraps or using flatbreads for things like uh, like think about naan or pan breads, okay? So these are all options that don't require yeast. And if when push comes to shove, if you're low on things in your pantry and you don't have yeast anymore, that is definitely a good option. And you can you can make sandwiches with flatbreads too. You would just make, you know, bread sized um, pieces of flatbread. And then obviously the last thing which I've talked extensively about now is bringing the price down on the yeast. I was able to locate better deals on yeast when I was motivated by breaking down the cost of my bread. By breaking it down item by item, I saw where the money was going in the bread and why it was so expensive. So if there's something that your family really enjoys but you're just feeling like it's too expensive, definitely consider looking at each component of that to see if there's anything you can do to bring it down. If there's one item that stands out, you may be able to do something that is going to make it um, work better for your family. So that's just a suggestion I have for you. I hope that this video blesses you in some way. I hope you've learned something with me. And I will link those recipes I talked to you about down below, as well as a couple links for um, items that you might enjoy if you're a bread maker. And if you've enjoyed this video, I'm gonna go ahead and put one here and one here that you may enjoy too. Um, if this is something that you wanna see more of, I do hope that you will subscribe and join our community. And down in the comments below, let me know if there's um, something that you're trying to price out and figure out how to save money on, because I like to dig into these things. All right, thank you guys, bye.